legt die Hausfrau nachts die Kette vor. Im Korridor steh ich davor. Mit der Pfeile ohne Eile keck, weil ich sie weg, da liegt der Dreck. Guten Abend, ihr Mettler und ihr Mettlern und willkommen zu unserem Video Podcast Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role playing game and your host, Tom Riley. Our scenario is The Devil That Eats Flies. It was written by David Larkin, Mike Mason, and Lynn Hardy, uh, and is uh, part of a collection entitled Berlin's a Wicked City. It's available from Drive Through RPG. Our game master is Keith Craig, and this is episode two. Our recap will be given by David Gazave as his character, Otto Richter. So, without any further delay, lass uns in die Dunkelheit riesen, David. Vielen Dank. When I awoke yesterday from troubling dreams, I had not the slightest idea what a long and complicated day we had before us. As often, I met my friends in uh, our regular cafe, where we met some very unpleasant uh, right wing thugs, and also received a note from a Prince Konstantinovich inviting us to his room, or as it turned out, suite at the very nice Hotel Eden. And so we had some beers near the hotel and went to see him, and his place is very well appointed. We were given um, a great deal of this vodka to drink and some very nice cigars and meet the handsome and charming prince himself. He shows us two disturbing photographs, one of uh, a journal with an Indian symbol on it, a swastika, also a bullet and written in bloody wall with the same symbol. And he says that his relative, Amar Sosnovsky, a 19-year-old beautiful strawberry blonde, he thinks might still be alive after escaping Russia through Poland and into Germany. Uh, and he wishes us to find her. He thinks that she now uses the name Francesca Shebskovska uh, and uh, offers us a fair amount of money uh, in the currency of our choice, maybe the dollar. So we go to Andreas Platz and we go to the Stork Club and have some talks and we go from there to the Red Mill Club and have some more talks and the waitress sends us to meet the call girl uh, and we get a general picture that the young lady had, in fact, ah, I leave something out. At the cafe, we learn that the monster Grossmann has hanged himself in the prison, yeah? And is the news all over town. And the prince's fear is that this Grossmann may have killed uh, the Shromskovska. Thus, the visit to Andreas Platz, where we find that indeed she had uh, known this Grossmann that at some point she threw herself in the Rhine and went to the uh, Doldorf in, in, uh, Asylum for the Insane. Uh, then Anita and I uh, 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 run across, I mean, we meet this Anita Berber and her friend Droste, and we have some marching powder and have more to drink and stay up all the night. Uh, and it's very, interesting as much as I can remember and so I'm a bit uh, weary as we meet uh, the next day in the cafe to follow up on uh, investigations. Excellent. All right so if I'm to understand you guys plan to meet up at a cafe uh, again to uh, gather your notes. Indeed. Yes, it's uh, it's rather yeah. urgent. All right. So while you are uh, going there, we'll say that uh, Astrid, you're uh, kind of uh, maybe dragging a little because you had a, a night. And you also got delayed because there was a little bit of uh, some more thugs marching through the street chanting. Uh, this time they've got a uh, vehicle. And uh, I'll show you a picture of it of it so so you can see they're out there they've got their vehicle you recognize in uh, some of them as the uh, thugs from um, mm -hmm. your encounter yesterday of course you recognize they've got the uh, swastika facing the opposite way that we know know of 
they're of course out chanting uh, various racist uh, things, but they seem to be uh, focusing a lot of their hate on a Walter Rathenau, who is the uh, Minister of Finance of Germany at the time. Uh, now, whether or not they're upset, upset with him because of the inflation, because the uh, mark is now it opened up at 1500 to the dollar, or because he's Jewish, uh, or probably both because that's how, how the Earhart Brigade was. Dude, she's fine. She's just gonna, she's just gonna kind of, kind of, kind of walk past them. She's, she's pretty hungover, and she just wants to, wants to meet the guys. And doesn't have enough time to worry about these idiot thugs, teenage boys, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys uh, meet back up at the cafe. Of course, uh, they're more than happy to uh, serve what, whatever you, you would like. Oh, you so you'll, back. you've made it. Uh, anything interesting happened uh, after I left? All right. Look, I, I don't mean to alarm any of you, but something happened last night. I, I, was, I heard some screaming, a woman screaming, and I, I ran to go try and, and help her. And uh, I, what I came upon was something I was not expecting. It was a, the woman's throat had been ripped out, and uh, she'd been murdered. And I found a man standing there with with blood and on his teeth and viscera all over him, claiming to not know what was going on. Of course, I immediately, I, I had to call the police, but I, 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 I don't understand how or, 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 or why it happened. It, it, it seemed like he, he, he almost, you know, I, I'm not sure he could have just trying to be, he could have just been putting on an act, but he could have, um, he, he could have been actually uh, unsure of what had just happened, but I, I couldn't understand what would possess somebody to act like that. I, I, I don't completely understand. You, you, who, who, where was the rest of you? I thought you were inside with Anita Berber. Oh, well, the, the night did not leave the club until I've the bird song. But good stuff, you left the club? Yes, uh, well, well, while they were, um, you know, schmoozing her over, I figured I would, you know, make my, you know, be useful elsewhere. But I, I you know, when I walked outside, I heard screaming and uh, sort of, I just, uh, it just happened. You, you uh, went looking for the, the other prostitute, uh, what's his name, Lulu, you said? Uh, yes, yeah, I, I, I think uh, Max yeah. did, uh, didn't you? Yes, yes, I, I, um, yes I, I went, Gustav and I left the, the cabaret and I lost track of Gustav and I found Lulu and so I spoke with her this evening. Um, Keith, what have I heard? screaming and stuff since I was outside? No, you guys kind of went the uh, opposite ways. Right. <laughs> okay. So um, this screaming that Gustav, I, I didn't see or hear and that once I spoke with Lulu, just went home. I, I think we, we must have gotten separated. I, I think I, you know, I, I made a wrong turn and, and I, I don't know what, you know, I, I ended up down the, sort of by the, uh, I think it was by the park. Uh, I, I like I said, I, I, I it really you, you had to have seen it. I mean, this 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 man, he just look, he was looking at me like he didn't know what was going on, but he he had her blood and 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 bits all all, all over him, like like maybe he just uh, you know. Uh, maybe I can uh, check with the authorities and maybe it's not something in the newspaper this morning. Yeah, it. I'm sure. You know, per perhaps we could try following up with the uh, with the police and see what they found so far. But I might be able to offer my services there. Uh, to uh, you know, speak with a man and see see what kind of psychological uh, state he is in that he's done this. It's I think strange. it's a great idea. There, there is a newspaper boy, uh, just like uh, out sell, selling papers, and as you expected, there is uh, he is yelling about murders, plural, in the uh, park. Murders. Mm. Murders. There's another one. Yeah. Let, me see, let me see the paper. He's like, ah, oh, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. He, he, uh, he sells it to you for a thousand marks. She kind of scrounges around and is able to yeah. find enough. And uh, splashed across the uh, front is uh, this article, Death Stalks Berlin. Do you want me to read this one? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Police have reported three separate murders in and around the Friedrich 
Chang neighborhood in the last 24 hours. One body, that of a woman known only to locals as Lulu, was found by students at the Andreas Gymnasium School, Koppenstrak 76, up among the branches of a tree. If we didn't know better, we would say she climbed the tree to escape a wild animal, but was pursued and torn apart up there, one of the officers informed our reporter. We now must ask, is there a bear in Berlin? Two other bodies were pulled from the Spree River. Inspector Krieg of the criminal police has refused to comment on the ongoing case, but notes that both women were far too mingled to make a positive identification at this time. Reports of missing persons in the Friedrich Shane district will be forwarded to Inspector Krieg while the case remains open, but many of the residents are unregistered immigrants, and there seems little hope that these ladies unknown will be identified anytime soon. My God, Lulu is dead. That is crazy. She was alive when I left her. Yeah, and, and none of this sounds like what Gustav is saying. Uh, no, I mean, the, 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, the police apprehended that man. This, this, this must have been before or, or, or after or uh, in a different part of the, of the so, park. I'm not sure. So possibly even a false murder, the one that you saw, Gustav. Hmm. I told you, doctor, the men around this area are ruthless to these women. I knew that there were, there were going to be more murders. It wasn't just, it wasn't just our man. There, there are other murderers around here. I don't believe right. for a second a bear would get into the heart of Berlin. That's nonsense. No, these men right. are killing no. these women. There's no I, I Russian really. circus or anything in, in, in the town. Yeah. I, I fear you may be right, but this is this is nothing like anything any of the disgusting acts I, I saw in war. This is this is beyond that. I, I I've never seen somebody do this to, to somebody else like but that. It's three or four in one night. I mean, if they were doing this every night, they would run out of prostitutes. I wouldn't be surprised if it's our little thug friends rolling around in their vehicles celebrating their their victory. So little Nazis. Yes. Mm. They did call themselves Scum. the Nazis already, didn't they? No, the, no, this is the Earhart Brigade. The Nazis are just a runt organization. I mean, See, it's the Earhart Brigade. <laughs> uh, they're little spiders. Do they have any... <laughs> Those thugs, so they like to, you know, find one person alone and, and hit them with sticks until they... Torches maybe, them. Yeah. But to, yeah. to bite through the flesh of someone's throat or do such damage that it looks like an animal attack. To chase Lulu against the tree. It doesn't make sense. And the Lulu, you saw Max. She did not seem frightened, no? She was in good shape. No, she, she, she seemed fine when I spoke with her. Um, she was with, another, with a group of, of other women. Um, perhaps she's we should, perfectly fine. Perhaps we should all go to the police station. I mean, uh, Gustav is a witness. Were you? Right. Did you stay there when the police came? Uh, I think so. Yes, I, I waited until they, they, you know, they, they took him away and took care of the body. Uh, I've, I've, I've got a friend or two uh, in the police force. Uh, if you want to try to get in, uh, I'm not sure how I, much they'll let us see, but we can at least ask them. Well, I, I can probably get in. I'm a doctor. I, I suggest that uh, that that Max perhaps does not go to the police station because he will be the prime suspect as the last living person to have seen Lulu. Yes. So, or Max, if you decide to come, you know, just be prepared. You may be held for quite a long time. Where, please? Where, where was she when you last saw her? Was there anybody else around? Or oh yes, there were uh, the small group of women. Uh, and she was one of them. Uh, I didn't get their names, actually. I just only spoke with Lulu. Um, so it's, it's, it's a matter of being prudent or not, but uh, uh, what, uh, what Astrid says may be true, but you almost somewhat consider that you, you say you can see her, and you can point up a time when you saw her. Mm. Um, if you don't tell them and they find out about it, they'll say, why didn't you say something? Yes. Exactly. Do you have an alibi? I, what did you I, do right afterwards? Well, after I left Lulu, I just went home. Did anyone see you? Um, well, I, I live with my mother. Oh, okay. 
so she can confirm that you were you were at the house. Yeah. She was up at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Give me a luck roll, Max. Okay. We're covering our tracks here. <laughs> oh, so Max, we, yes. Would you, yes, yeah, I made your, that. Your mother what was up? Maybe uh, she had to use the outhouse or something. That's so all you show. <laughs> you know, I I have probably the least. The least alibi. I left early. For all you know, I could be the wild man murderer tearing the people's throats out. Maybe I never went home. I don't think I came home. that much. The, uh, the other week, I saw a little bit of roast in your beard, and you hadn't had eaten for six hours. So I think if you had the blood of four women in your beard, it would be hard yeah. to disguise. Yeah, but you see, I changed my shirt. So. I'm sure you're shirt. quite the lady chaser, uh, Dr. Vogel shoes, but I, am, uh, I, am, I, am but I don't think you would chase a woman up a tree. I am, I am, I am uh, a detective in my own, uh, implicating myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we should, we should definitely talk to the police and tell the them that we were, we were locally there, we were nearby. Look, uh, yeah. It, I, I think with uh, with with the doctor and I, we can make sure that they you know give you adequate treatment. And they don't uh, just put the finger on you immediately. Well, Gustav, you were you were you were already spoken to the police. Yes, I mean I, I was there, uh, you know, when uh, to report it in. Yeah. So you are the prime suspect. Ah. Uh, well, no, there was the I, man with the viscera hanging right, out of his mouth. Cool, Seems cool. like the more likely suspect yeah, in this case. Yeah, so did, did I murder all those women and then go find the other guy? Probably not. I, that would I would have stuff all over me still. Yeah. And you couldn't have have chased Lulu up tree because Max was with. Him. Yeah, there'll become some questions asked, but I don't think they can charge anybody with anything. They certainly can't charge us with overdoing down the cocaine. Everybody does that. It's not an illegal, illegal. One more coffee, please, for me. Oh, yes, yes. Same, please. Re regarding the other matter and the, uh, and, and the prince and his American currency, uh, if the last place we believe Francesca to be is the Daldorf Asylum, yeah. Uh, do you have any friends there, Hans? I don't you think don't... we can pose as relatives. And no, send... I am a doctor. I should be able to see her. Tell her that she. Now, here's the thing: if I can get involved with this murder investigation, this homicide investigation, then I think I can go to the asylum and stand involved in, a, in an investigation that involves relatives of her. I need to speak with her. Maybe I can get through that way. Maybe I can just be a doctor mm -hmm. and say I need to talk to her. If she knew Lulu, and Lulu is uh, a, a very uh, important matter for the police right now. Yes, it's a good, good, good con connection. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right. So, uh, what I gathered was you were planning to go to the police. Yeah, I think that's the first thing. All right. Who has the highest law? Um, Ooh, I have you, five. I have 30. <laughs> yeah, which could that's... probably be the highest. <laughs> oh, More geez. than me. Yeah. All right, Gustav, give me a law roll. Uh, hey, I got a, wait, yeah, I got a 10. All, All right, time. nice, yeah. nice. All right, so you uh, so you have interacted with the police, and fortunately, you've been one of your contacts in the police for your bounty hunting. Hunting right. is the Inspector Krieg, who uh, awesome. was named as the primary detective on this. Inspector Krieg, Krieg, you said? Yep. Awesome. K R I E G Krieg. Okay. So. It means war. Yes. Yes. I'm. I'm oh, that's here. right. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the uh, the the you know the uh, some of the some of the detachments of the uh, the boys back you know back in the war they like to call themselves the 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 boys of Krieg and things like that. Uh. <laughs> All right. So uh, you guys make it to the uh, to the police station as mm -hmm. as you would expect. It is uh, rather busy, but uh, so when you show up the uh, the desk sergeant's there. He's like, uh, Gustav, uh, good to see you. Uh, uh, 
Uh, yes, what, uh, good what, to see you again. What can we do for you? Yes, uh, I, was, I was wondering if um if Inspector Krieg is in. Ah, uh, he is. He is. He's he's very busy. Very busy. Uh, is it important? Well, uh, uh, we had some questions about the case, and we think we have some things that might be uh, of use to him. Some some uh, some clues, perhaps, or some leads, or uh, at least some uh, some some oh. some evidence or facts to help him. You know, start the timeline up. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, these are your colleagues. You tell us so much about. Yes. <laughs> yes. Of course. Uh, uh, some, some, yes, wonderful, yes, uh, yes, some wonderful. Some yes. wonderful folks. So some wonderful people. Yes. All right. So he's like, so he gets on the phone. He calls. Mm. He calls back. He has a little bit of talk. He's like, going, oh, now, yes, he'll he'll be with you in about thirty minutes." I sort of look to the others. Uh, does that work with you all? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. No problem. Well, yeah. The thirty minutes passes. Uh, mm. As you can imagine, the uh, what a lobby of a police station is is like, mm. and so. But they do uh, welcome you back. Inspector Krieg is there. He's as he's a uh, kind of your stereotypical mm. inspector. Is a picture of him. You know, always got the uh, perpetual cigarette in his mouth. Uh, maybe some ashes. Always kind of on his uh, suit pants. Oh, uh, he looks up. He's like, Ah, Gustav. Uh, good, good to see you. I heard heard you might have some uh, some information. Yes, it's uh, great to see you again. Yes, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, with with what happened uh, last night, uh, it seems that uh, a lot was going on, and uh, 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 perhaps, uh, you know, me and my uh, friends could uh, help you out, and you could help us out, and tell us what you 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 and your boys have found. Oh well, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. So the that any help is much appreciated. It's uh, mm. we haven't had a uh, case like this since we started pulling the uh, Grossman's bodies out of the uh, the river. Indeed. Uh, who, who wanted to start? Uh, uh, Max, perhaps, uh, or? Oh yes, um, yes, uh, Inspector Krieg. Uh, my name is uh, Max Hoffman. I am uh, a journalist with the Evening Standard, and um, last night I actually was interviewing uh, Lulu. Oh, you were. Yes, sir. Um, I, I've been uh, working on a case, and uh, it seems that. Uh, missing persons case and it seems that uh, she is uh, was a friend of the, per the missing person that i'm looking for oh um, well uh what what led you to to speak to speak to lulu i mean uh, are you a regular patronage of of her uh oh no um i uh learned that uh, the person i'm looking for uh lived in the area uh, was friends with Lulu. Um, there was some suspicions that uh, the missing person in question may have also been involved in the uh, uh, Lady of the Night as well, uh, uh -huh. and that's what led me to uh, to Lulu, um, actually. And so it, it actually it, it turned out that uh, that uh, Lulu was friends with this person. So it uh, it was a oh. good good uh, interview, but. Um, oh, yeah. I assume uh, when you left, Lulu was fine and with uh, companies of witness witnesses? Absolutely. Uh, there was uh, herself and uh, a few other ladies as well standing there. Um, and so after speaking with her, I, I, I left and went home. Oh, okay. Well, uh, and what time was this? I did sometime after midnight. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, well... Well, uh, yeah, she, uh, she, the, she was found about uh, five in the morning. So, oh. uh, but she had not been. She was still warm. So, yes, and uh, I was because uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Gustav, your <laughs> Max, and I, of course, uh, we were uh, going to try to find Lulu, and uh, we, we got split up a little bit in the uh, navigating the uh, the dark roads of Berlin, of course. And uh, I, that's when I, uh, you know, heard the screams, and I ran to try to help the woman, and unfortunately saw you know what what i called in last night which uh, speaking, oh yes. you know, I, yeah i, I gave yes. my uh, my statement i was wondering uh if if you've had anybody look at the body yet or if you found anything otherwise uh you know my, well, my uh, friend uh, uh, doctor you know my doctor dr vogel here dr hans he could perhaps oh. uh, uh oh, but, per what? perhaps we should explain a little bit um yeah. we are we are all of different professions uh mm -hmm. i'm a medical 
uh, examiner um, from Leipzig. Uh, but we've all sort of banded together into a little club uh, that we, uh, we assist, you know, detective work. And we've been hired by a certain individual uh, who you understand we can't, uh, we can't tell you who that is. Uh, no but uh, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Hoffman and Mr. Hubbard, he was, he was looking, uh, he's looking for a relative of his. Uh, oh, he believes yeah. that she came, uh, uh, she was in Poland and then she came here and things were not so good for her and she became a lady of the night. Uh, and so we are following those leads when all of this began to happen. At the time, uh, uh, my friend Otto here and, uh, and Astrid, they were inside the nightclub, the Red Mill. Um, oh. Uh, actually having a very nice time with uh, uh, the, um, the entertainer, uh, Anita Berber. Uh, oh, yes, yes. I, uh, yeah. So they have, they have perfect witnesses. They, they were seen by many people. Actually, they were all seen by many people there. Uh, oh, it's only shortly after that that they, the two gentlemen here went to look to see if they could find Lulu, who was a contact of a friend they're looking for. Oh, and I went home. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, understood. Understood. So what what led you? Uh, what led the relative, your client, to believe that? I mean, ladies of the night, they they unfortunately come and go, and uh, we have trainloads of people from Poland being dropped off, dropped off in that area. Well, it didn't. It didn't actually start that day. We were. Uh, she came here to be a dancer. Oh. Uh, and we and we talked to the people at her uh, her dance um, what do you call it? dance company, and then I guess it, it, she had some financial difficulties, and you know so many after the war they turned to yes yes well, I, 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 it was a shock to us as well ah yes yes ah, well I it is an unfortunate uh, obviously. Uh, not my uh, area, uh, unless uh, you you suspect she's been murdered. And then, of course, I uh, that would be in my wheelhouse. We we don't know that yet. We're, we're still following up leads. We're surprised. We're surprised that. Well, we don't know. We're still investigating oh. what happened to her. Um, we uh, uh, it's just shocking that we figured that since we actually somebody spoke to Lulu, and then we see she's dead. We yes. needed to yeah. come immediately forward and tell you what we knew. Whether oh, it's yeah. helpful or not, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, well, right now we're we're at a loss. Like I like I said, uh, I, I, it's almost like a copycat, a uh, copycat of uh, that 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 the, the butcher. Oh yeah. You say there were two yeah. two women. Well, you say also there were two women thrown into the river. We. Fish some bodies out. So that would be actually four bodies then. The woman who yes, was... but 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 the one that uh, Herr Herr Huberman uh, found a the murderer was found with. Ah ah, I see, I see. Mm. You you think so? Um, because when we were going into that area, he was there in the park. We I think walked by him. When he was, you know, stooping the prostitute, it just looked like a. Yeah. Why would he murder her right in the middle of the park in front of witnesses? I don't know. I mean, we we've got him locked up, and um, oh, uh, he claims he has no memory of it. But he right. seemed to be quite disoriented. Do you think maybe I could examine him? I'm a doctor. Yeah. And I paper. have some training in psychology as well. Yeah. Uh, detective and I, oh. I work with with a psycho a psychoanalyst and, and um, yeah I can certainly vouch for her yeah oh well I mean it, it couldn't hurt maybe he has a mental block maybe it's so bizarre or there maybe you know. he has been framed I don't know how that's possible but mm. Mm. I, I can't imagine how somebody would, would set that up like that but yes I I figure, you know, uh, we can help you and, you know, you can help us a little bit yeah. with, with our with our two investigations. Oh, well, I mean, 
I am always happy to uh, scratch your back and all. I mean, obviously, you haven't given me a lot. Uh, a missing girl. We only know a little bit. Ah, yes. We know that there was a connection with Lulu. Ah, mm. with Lulu. Yeah. I don't think that. I don't think that it's so much of a connection that Lulu was murdered because I think that what happened to Lulu is some homicidal maniac. You've got running around on the street. Mm -hmm. I understand. Also, is it not unusual that if you think you have the man in custody who did this, how could he have been there or there? That's why uh, I we didn't associate them together because we arrested him and we think someone else committed the some sort of copycat. Yes. Interesting. Uh before we interview the subject, Inspector, uh, it, it, does he have a history at all, a criminal history? Mm, no. No, he's a, uh, you know, a, uh, I'd say we know nothing about him. I mean, we ran a, a check on him. He's a uh, businessman. Well, he lost a lot, a lot uh, by buying war bonds, which... Uh, Many people did. Um, and do you have any other suspects? You don't have to give me names, but are there other suspects for these these copycat murderers? No, we're at a loss. That's why I was so happy to uh, meet you. I was hoping that maybe you had 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 a lead lead for it, but no, uh, no, no lead at all. Unfortunately, it's just something. Our lines are crossing here, and perhaps we, we can be of assistance to each other. I'm sorry, Dr. Right. I was just going to ask, is this something that's been going on for a while, or was it just last night? Uh, just last night is the fir first uh, of it. I mean, you know, uh, there was no attempt to hide the bodies, is, is, is it? So that's why we're sure that, you know, it's not something that we're just stumbling across them. So aside from Lulu, the two bodies were thrown into the river which is where you recover them from. Yes. Which does follow Grossman's, uh, uh, what does they say in Latin, modus operandi. Um, yeah, you might have a copycat on your hands. He's like, uh, yeah, he's like- Several. Uh, yeah, like Grossman, I mean, you know, I was barely getting that case closed out. I still have some of the documents here. Oh. Just, would you mind if we looked at those as well? Uh, no, no problem. He's like going, uh, I have a, his, his journal and he, he presents you to uh, what his journal. He's like, obviously, I can't have you take it from the police station. Of course uh, not. For well, why don't, uh, why don't uh, Huberman and uh, und Richter and Hoffman go through the paperwork and, and Astrid and I will go talk to, uh, I don't even know the, the man's name who's... Uh, Accused of the murder. Oh, uh, that—that that is a uh, a Conrad. Conrad. You know Conrad once. Conrad Birdie. But, uh, mm -hmm. as an entertainer. <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah. I guess we we, we we rather appreciate you letting us yeah. go through your notes and uh, and uh, our friends speaking with them. Uh, perhaps I'll uh, buy you lunch, uh, Krieg, uh, and I sort of oh. give him a nice little wink. Excellent. And Otto didn't come with you. I, I don't know if uh, he got that guy. Got oh, okay. Lost. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, I said it really loud. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Rita! <laughs> All right, so you were, uh, Hans, you were going to go talk to Conrad. Conrad Birdie. Yeah, Hans and Astrid. I just got it. Like Hans, Hans and Astrid and uh, Max and Gustav were going to uh, look through the journal, right? Yep. All right, so we'll come back to you. So Otto, you were going uh, around the cafes. We find that part. And uh, kind of asking uh, around, uh, you're kind of asking around about where the murders took place. Yeah, and if anybody knew any of the victims, because the newspaper doesn't tell us any names. And if there's some connection that isn't obvious, but uh, the people down in the streets who know these women, maybe they know something the police would not figure out. Okay, uh, give me a luck roll for that. Yeah, 
52 for 61. I'm lucky enough. Ah, uh, yeah. So what you uh, asking around for the uh, women's names who do, uh, they were using uh, probably aliases. They were, were prostitutes. They'd been in the city for a, uh, about, about three years now. And they'd been working the same area that Lulu and that, that kind of uh, red light district and everything. So uh, their names we'll say were are, are Broomhilda and, and, Ber and Berta. Right. And we don't know the one, uh, that's the two that were in the river? Yes. Broomhilda and Berta. Uh, and the one that was with, I don't know Conrad's name yet, but the one that... Uh, that Gustav had? Uh, well, uh, Anna. Yes. Uh, so when you say they've been around for three years, they were, uh, they were immigrants from perhaps Poland? Uh, from uh, various parts of uh, Eastern Europe. Various Eastern. So yes, the same, the same women who are uh, in danger and often turn to this life, and also the same kinds of women that Grossman liked. Exactly. Now, you, asking around, you do find uh, a a 13-year-old girl who uh, was one of the was the person that found Lulu's body. Oh, poor child. She is uh, quite traumatized by that, and she she says uh, she's like, yeah, I, I I I just thought it was someone up there playing and. She was up there, up there dangling from her, dangling, and there was uh, these rope things coming from her stomach. Once I got closer, I realized that they were uh, her insides. Yeah, child, I'm sorry. Um, that is something you should never see. And you saw no, you saw no one around. You didn't hear anything. It's uh, she goes, no, and you, you can give me a psychology rule. That's not likely, no. 84 right. for 20. Yeah. She, she says, no, no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't see, see anything, anything but that. As soon as I saw that, I, I, I went running home to mama. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I'm very sorry for this. Uh, you can stay home with mama for a little while, I hope. Yes, uh, yes I, I hope so. I mean, you know, and I'm going to give her a few thousand marks, whatever, you know, oh. useful change I can fish out without flashing a wad. Right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. And nobody mentions anything about angry boyfriends or Johns that went missing or. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. So Max and Gustav, you guys uh, have the journal that you're looking through? Yep. 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 Uh, give me a, uh, since you're trying to read it somewhat quick, because it's a, it's a large journal. And do any of you have any psychology training? or? Uh, I have a little bit for reading people. It's got 50. So. Okay. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, get, Something, give me a yeah. psychology roll there. Sure. Oh. So yeah, we'll we'll come to the German roll here in Oof, a second. Uh, unfortunately, I failed that. I only got seven. All right, nine, so. all right, sounds good. Hi, right. and then uh, whoever's reading the journal, because uh, give me a German uh, language German roll. Sure. Good. Um, yeah, I, I passed. What about you, Max? Okay. Sorry, I was looking um, down. I did not. All right. So, uh, Max, as you're kind of looking at it, it just almost looks like it's scribbled. It's not really following a great train of thought, or, and you can't make hide or hair of it. The most you can see is you're like, maybe he was designing some type of board game. Like, he seems to have all these kind of rules written down, but, you know, they don't make sense to you. Okay. As you are reading it, uh, Gustav, okay. you see that uh, there's uh, uh, sausage recipes, but what you okay. notice at, at first, what grabs your eye is there is a list of, uh, 
a names in a oh in a strange uh, pattern. Who knows how he was organizing these names? They're all women's names. Some of them have X's near in, and others do not. And as you uh, go through, you see that uh, you see Sasnovsky's listed in there with an X in it. You see Lulu's name is listed in there. It has an X in it. And oh, near. Oh, dear. All right. Uh, so it seems like perhaps the X would mean that he's gotten to them. Or perhaps that means they got away. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to figure this out. Uh, quite, it's quite out odd. Yeah. yeah. It's quite odd that the, uh, the ones that got away have the X. Because you would oh. think it would be the other way. Mm. Wait, but, but Lulu has an X. She does have an X. And yep. Lulu did not get away. Now, Lulu escaped. Oh, well, time. she did escape. That, that is true. But, and then, unfortunately, last night she didn't escape. Mm. But she did escape at first. That's right. Yeah, because she, she told me that uh, she saw his sausage shack. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I can't imagine. The grim. And Gustav, you would have gotten the murder victim's name that you were at. Okay. Where and and so her name is in there also with an X, the Anna. Okay, Anna, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, wonderful. Uh, we'll uh, show this to the others uh, when, when we can, and perhaps they'll might have some more insight. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Hans and Astrid to. Uh, Headed on down to the uh, jail. They have him uh, in a cell by himself. Uh, he he looks quite tired, disheveled, almost like a uh, ninety pound weak, a very weak, probably been bullied all his his life kind of demeanor. Do yeah. they have a means of uh, us uh, interviewing him? Uh, obviously, he's a man who. Rips people's throats out. Uh, we don't want to like be in the cell with him. They he have can... a they have a bench, so you can sit outside the cell and talk to him. So and maybe just... they could uh, handcuff him to the, the the bench or the something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're willing to help you out with that. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a, like fairly private. Like I'd we like... have a semi-private conversation with him. We really need to see him face to face. Okay. Yeah, if you ask, so they'll give you a, a an interrogation room. It's not a high priority. I think this is an open and shut case. Uh, good morning. Uh, I am Dr. Hans Vogel Schweiker, and this is uh, Astrid Schneider. Um, Hello. We are we are not officially on this case, but. Uh, I'm a medical examiner, and, uh, and Astrid is a psychologist. Um, we would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Huberman, uh, actually witnessed the attack, but you seemed quite disoriented. Uh, do you recall anything that happened? Yeah. I, well, I mean, I had hired the uh, young lady for a, a rendezvous, and she had uh, wanted to be in the park where we could be seen. She felt safer that way. Yeah, in fact, and, we saw you. Oh, well, I, I, I am sorry about that. I, I, I hope I did not offend. But That's what you expect to see in the area, yeah. 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 But uh, then uh, it was almost like things went went blank. I saw it, it kind of got misty, and I I saw a a woman, a a woman of uh, almost obsidian skin. And then, then I I woke up and Gustav, Gustav I believe is what you you called him. He was pulling me off of her, and I. I had the taste of iron blood in my mouth. What's the record? What's your name? Uh, my name is Con Conrad Schultz. 
Um, Astrid's gonna pull a piece of paper out of her bag and and a pencil and and ask if he could draw the the obsidian woman. Okay. Let me give a give him a little bit of an art roll. Let's see how he does. Okay. I think it's also uh, a... uh, it's better than a stick figure, but you know it's not. It's it's probably about if I was to try and draw something, so not not the best. But you know, he colors it in. I mean, you know, obviously with a pencil drawing, it, it's not the best, but it is a. Uh, he, he as he tries to explain, it's not like it's an equatorial Africa skin. It's even blacker than that, almost like it absorbs the light. Is how he's trying to describe it. And um, if I may ask a, a delicate question, had you um, climaxed yet, or? Was this in the process? It's a build up or I I had not. No, 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 I no. I had not not finished. Interesting. Do you hire prostitutes often, Mr. Schultz? Well, I there's not much reason to hold on to your money and I don't yeah we're not, not, not a fan you. not a fan we don't judge yeah I, 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 I yeah I am a regular patron I, I would say yeah. and I, what do you do for a living mr. Uh, mr. Schultz I used to be a businessman and now I uh, I am a day laborer ah where do you work I uh, at the paper mill. Right. Have Have you been having odd dreams lately? Yes, it's a good because, uh, No, not not really. I, in fact, I can't remember any dreams. Have, would you say you've been sleeping well? Yeah, I, I I'd wake up rested, but my body would be tired you know my dad used to say the uh, problem with getting older is you get out of bed and the bed kicked your ass kind of kind of feels like that but mm. your, father, your father had a mouth on didn't he? <laughs> uh, have you have you ever slept walk in your life has anyone ever told you that you you're a somnambulist somnambulation yeah uh no not that i know of no uh, do you use any uh, uh, drugs? Any uh, uh, enhancements? Oh, oh. Only uh, I. I only enjoy the the beer. Only the beer, not the cocaine. No, no. No, I didn't know. When you say cocaine, Astrid snaps the pencil and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Kind of like oh. <laughs> No, 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 just enjoy uh, a, 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 pint, a pint or two, a liter. Did you meet anybody early in the evening? Anybody who talked to you or touched you or anything like that? No, no, I, I, I hadn't. You didn't shake hands with anybody? No, I, I, I don't want to sound judgy, but a lot of people down there are sticky fingers. They, they yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I just have one other question for you, Mr. Schultz. What do you know about the Grossman case? Mm, good question. Grossman, he he was a a, a fiend, and uh, he he sold a. Uh, sold human meat from what I understand and I, I shudder to think that I might have ate it because I, I I would purchase sausages quite often from uh from the black market. Did you know Grossman personally? No. No, if I would have met that man I would have uh, turned him in uh, for sure. Well, I think that was the point, is that nobody who met him actually knew that's what he was doing. These kind of people are very secretive. Perhaps you are right. 
Apparently he's been doing this for what, 30 years before mm. he finally got caught. Ugh. They think maybe hundreds of women he's done this to. <sighs> Shudder to think. Well, I'm, we can't, of course, make you any promises. We're not actually working on the case. We're working on another case. But perhaps something that we turn up will help exonerate you or at least have them, you know, you don't, you don't seem like a man who is crazy. No, I, 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 don't, I don't understand it at all, in fact. I would like to have uh, Dr. Hirschfield come and assess you sometime. I will get yeah, the inspector to do, to do a full analysis on you. Well, if you think it would help. Why don't we, Your uh, case is quite fascinating, objectively. Uh, to speak to Detective Craig. Uh, I see uh, if we can get Hirsch in here. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Yeah. Schultz. Yeah. So uh, let let him know I I uh, I had no control of my uh, I I have no memory of doing this. I, I mean, you know, if you don't remember doing it, are you guilty? I I, I don't know. Well, that's for the courts to decide. But but we are on. We are hoping that uh, everything turns out. Uh, with the truth in mind. So, oh. good luck to you. Thank you. Indeed. It's very strange, okay. right? don't luck. you think? Very odd. Uh, this man does not seem like a psychotic murderer. If, if he had walked in there and the man had been crazed, I would have said, this is a completely unrelated, insane man, but mm -hmm. he does not come across that way. No. Across is quite seem, meek and docile. Actually. Yeah, he doesn't seem cold and calculated either. Mm -hmm. Of course, as we just pointed out, you might not know Grossman for the monster that he was if you actually met him in real life. Yes. Uh, let's go see how the boys are doing. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. So you guys uh, head back out. You meet up uh, Max and Gustav. Uh, Inspector Krieg is coming back to his desk. He's like going, ah, he's like going, any, any luck? Uh, well, in, in my opinion, he seems perfectly normal. Not the kind of crazed, insane man. Hmm. Uh, Could we have an analyst come in and, and uh, provide a more thorough assessment of him? His case would be quite fascinating and I'm sure would appear in all the journals. Yeah, I, I I would have no problem with that. Of course, you know that that'd be more for the uh, courts uh, to decide. I, but I I would support it. Anything to get to the bottom and pre and prevent. Yeah. Yes. Um, Inspector, can I ask you a question about the the Grossman case? Um, you know, we have heard that that Grossman had a, a separate. Uh, facility or area or building where he would do his his um, his uh, sausage making um, yes to use it as objective as possible uh, would we be able to perhaps examine that site and perhaps even oh. see his his room where he lived oh well uh, I mean uh, to visit his garden would be no problem. It's uh, at the the Sherber Gardens on the north side of the uh, the town. Uh, we uh, I know that they've been trying to uh, re, re release out his garden plot, but no no luck. And uh, his apartment, yeah, it is no longer a uh, a crime scene. It's been uh, handed back over to the uh, to the landlord. It's probably Excellent. been clean since. So. Yeah, unfortunately. There may still be clues there. We'll say, uh, uh, it's, you know, uh, Krieg, you know, Inspector Krieg, uh, uh, Max and I, we, uh, we found, uh, we were looking through uh, uh, his journal, you know, Grossman's journal. We found that, um, uh, you know, we found, we found uh, Lu, you know, uh, Lulu, um, our, uh, our Shemskoska, and, uh, and uh, this, this Anna. Uh, a number of people, you see, they, they, there's all these women, and I go ahead and list a bunch of them out. They all have exes, right? Hmm. And so, uh, and uh, these all seem to be, we, we know from Anna and Lulu that these are the women who got away from Grossman, you know, from Grossman. So it yeah. seems that every time he, a woman got away from him, he marked them with an X. Yes, I, I, I would, I could see, yeah. I mean, obviously we would need to check all the, all the names that have an X. Mm -hmm. There's about 20 of them. 
right. in there. So, so I'll just you know perhaps that'll be that, that could be of use to you. That's what, what that's what we found so far. Hmm. And interesting. Do you find it odd that these women who got away that they didn't turn him in because he was abusing them? Is that odd? Are they maybe they were afraid of him? It could have been. I mean, or it could have maybe he paid them more. I mean, to well, if I, if I recall, the only reason he was actually captured was because he was caught in the process of chopping up a woman. He was and making yes. her into a sausage. Yes, yes, his uh, his neighbor call, called it called it in, and we came in and caught him in the process. Yeah. So really random chance. He'd still be doing what he was doing if uh, if it wasn't for an accident. Somebody complaining or something. Mm. Well, the, I mean, I, I, I tend to say it was the goodwill of the, uh, of the neighbor and the uh, better angels of the German people. Mm. Well, how, what, what did you guys find in terms of paperwork? Oh, well, uh, you know, just what, just what we oh, you, told just what you just, yeah. Yeah. Well, we better go, we better go and meet up with Otto. Um, if, uh, if we find anything uh, more, we'll be sure to tell you, uh, uh, Inspector right. Creek. Of course. Oh, thank you. All right. Okay. Otto, so while you're, uh, kind of, uh, traveling or, around, I assume you at a planned meetup time or something. Yeah, uh, I'm going to get back at the Bayerbachter at some point. Right. While you're on your way back there, you see um, kind of out of the corner of your eye, you see someone running down the street. And uh, for a brief second, you're almost positive that the leg is bent the wrong way, almost like a uh, horse's leg, you know, how the knee bends the yeah. other way yeah. and for a brief brief second you see that uh he pushes down a uh, a woman and go and runs down an alley and, and uh, he, all right like, I, I, you know a uh, hot pursuit although i'm not the fastest with my leg but i'm a little bit long and my cane has a good swing to it oh yeah that's right well, you, so you come down the alley, and you get there, and it is a dead end, but there is nothing in the alley but trash. Jesus. Uh, uh, sewer grates? Uh, there is a sewer grate, yeah. But the bars are too, is it a lift up or bars? Uh, it would be need to be lifted up. Yeah. All right, so you can cane and pry it up? Yeah, heavy is all hell. It's, is it stuck? Yep, it's stuck. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, windows. Did it climb something? Is there a ladder? No. Uh, there is not a ladder, but uh, about three stories up, you see a window open with like the curtains kind of blowing out of it. Yeah, three stories up with a broken leg. Although it was running fast, yeah? Yes. Must be some terrible deformity. Maybe so, was this a, a, an old person, a young person? What did I see? Uh, probably uh, in their twenties. Oh, yeah. So possibly in the war or some maybe birth defect. Very disturbing to look. Then the the garbage is just rubbish in the street, right? No cans to hide in. Right. Yeah. And so that open window, and it's a dark, empty alley, and there's nothing. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, you know, I'll give uh, I'll give the walls a couple taps. Maybe okay. the, I've seen more than one false wall in my day. Okay. Brick, uh, give brick, me, brick. Give yeah. me a spot hidden. Oh nine for sixty-five. Oh, nice. All right. So as you're looking, you're kind of tapping. Kind of underneath that that window, you see a spot where the uh, a round a couple round spots. There's actually uh, five of them, mm. where the walls are almost clean. You know, like a just 
because everything else kind of looks sooty and all, but this this yeah. spot's clean. And as you look up, you see that it kind of re at regular intervals goes up the wall. Uh huh. All right. Uh, I'll and I'll test one with hand and one with foot and see if I can pull myself up a bit. Now it's just on the brick. It's just clean. So you put your hands on oh, it. Just and, clean and, spots. And, yep. Mm hmm. They're not footprints, they're just round. Yep, round. That is very strange. And uh, so, yeah, it's just soot and schmutz, and the clean spot is just brick, I think. Yep, brick underneath, yep. I have to, I, who, I think who I have you know, as a camera, because this needs to be. Uh, must be some study for this. There's no pipe or something with a leak that maybe is cleaning a little pot. And no. they're dry. They are dry, yes. And this 20-year-old male person, just nondescript. I mean, they went pretty fast. Just a bent leg, and now they vanish. Yep. Uh, well, now I'm going to the schnapps instead of more coffee. <laughs> I'll go, and I'll go back down the alley, and I assume someone's helped the old lady up. Yeah, yeah, she's gotten back up. Uh, but oh. she's still there. I can say, ask her if she knew the little punk, if she saw his face. I'm sorry no. I didn't stop to help you. I wanted to catch the little bastard and give him a good schmack. Oh, I appreciate it. I thought he was uh, uh, going to try and snatch my handbag, but no, he just, just knocked me down almost like he just wanted to be cruel. Yeah, a vicious little thing. If I catch him, I'll hang his neck. Uh -huh. He came down this way, right? This alley? Uh, 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 like? yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I was obviously... I was yeah, it's down very fast. And... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did anyone see which way this little bastard came from? No, no. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, apologize to her again and thank her. Uh, oh. and, and, and I'm going to... And nothing on the street. There's no clean spots on the street. No. Nope. Mm. Yeah. Time to go to Bayabakhter and have a schnapps. All right. Well, the group gets all back together again at Der Bayabakhter. I, I suppose we'll, uh, we'll we'll catch up, Otto, on you know on, on what we found about the X's and uh, you know and the, uh, about how the, it seems like uh, those are the ones that got away. Oh, uh, except Lulu no longer has gotten away, nor yeah, the one you saw was Anna. Ah, uh, yes, Anna was the, unfortunately, was the victim uh, last night. It seems that, I mean, if, if she was the victim of, of this thing, it means, it means that she got away from Grossman. Or, yeah. you know, wh whatever, you know, if, if uh, poor Conrad actually did kill her or if something else did and put her voice box and his blood all over her, or all over him, to make it look like he killed her. You, was there a Bertha on the list or a Brumhilde? So, uh, Gustav, to remember that, yeah. give, me, give me an intelligence yeah. roll. Or, uh, or Max, you can roll it also. But Max, you'll need a, uh, an extreme because you kind of failed your German roll. Okay. I got an 11. Oh. Let's see how Max did. <laughs> no, 90. No. All right, Gustav, you do remember seeing okay. those names in there with X's. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I do actually, yeah. Both of them had X's. So the all he, prostitutes got away. And, and the, the uh, Grossmann's diary was published in part, yeah? No. It says the prince got the name or the prince out of the book in some secret way. He got it in some secret way. Right. He, he said he had away. contacts in the... He had con contacts, yeah. So it sounds, gentlemen, as though we have some kind of uh, group of psychotic uh, people who want to finish Grossman's work for him now that he is dead. And you know, um, we seem to have found a fairly strong connection. It's the, yeah. it's the people who are getting away. Yeah, like you say, they're, they're, they're finishing it. Uh, it's this one other little connection that you know how we like the bizarre. Um, Mr. Uh, Schultz, the 
It's a man who ripped out the throat of the prostitute. He was disturbed by the fact that he may have actually eaten some of Grossman's uh, human sausage. Mm -hmm. And the sausage was sold in the area. But, but, but her voice box was, it, 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 it was in her lap. Oh, I'm it's saying that, lap, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying as a medical doctor, sometimes I think, you know, there there can be connections of a medical nature. Uh, Mr. Mr. Schultz doesn't remember things, and, and he's hallucinating uh, black shaded women, and uh, and right. he's falling asleep, and, and this is happening as he's uh, as he's approaching climax. Uh, Okay. It, it, if we start to find this, just just to keep this in the mind, so that if uh, if we start to notice a pattern of of this also happening, people who've also eaten this, maybe he put something else in this it's a sausage. Well, then maybe it's a an, disease. There, yeah, there's a myth, yeah, that if you eat human flesh, then you are compelled to eat human flesh. That right? is Once that a is a common a belief, yeah. And it is a very common uh, psychological principle uh, that uh, cannibalism usually indicates some some deeper longing for for connection and, and intimacy and perhaps uh, perhaps we're seeing some type of mass hysteria. And and it would be something that wouldn't come out into the open until people knew that they might have been eating human flesh. Mm -hmm. If they yeah, didn't know, so then nothing would have happened. It eats at the mind, yeah? Oh, mind, yeah. maybe I had, a, maybe I, the last time I was with a prostitute, she was a worst that I ate. And now I have that inside me, this monster lives inside me. Jesus, I hope flesh. I didn't eat any sausage from this area. So you, you think perhaps uh, he's telling the truth in that he was undergoing some sort of hallucination or, or possession or trance and, and when he ripped her throat out? Well, when I met him, he didn't seem in the least bit unusual. This man is, is not a, a raving, psychotic uh, uh, mastermind. If you, look into his, docile. if you look into his background, I think we're going to find that he's never had any mm -hmm. no offenses. There's certainly nothing like this. She didn't Who's seem with flesh in his teeth. Yeah, I know, I know it must have been horrific, but... If you're going to do some bizarre murder like that, why don't you do it in the middle? Of, hey, why don't you do it in secret? Astrid Hans, how did uh, he look physically? Have the police uh, roughed him up at all? Did they clean him up or was he know, bloody? No, I think no. they just have him there in custody. No, it seems like he's being treated fairly well. The truth is he's probably going to hang. Yes. Yeah, because I, they, what I'm thinking is that I wonder, in Gustav, when you found the couple and she was screaming, it was pretty dark, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, was. it was. It was. It was later. I mean, I wonder if, so, all right, I'm a little less uh, of the imagination than uh, perhaps Hans and Astrid. What if there are, say, five men, maybe uh, Earhart types, and they think, ah, this Grossman who kills foreigners and, and women of low value. And now he is gone and we will take the job for him. And they make a club, maybe they put animal teeth in it, yeah? Mm. And they can attack these women and it looks like a bite mark, huh? And five of them hit a woman at once and it looks like a rab ra an animal has killed her, yeah? Yeah. I mean, that's a perfectly and since they scroll her in the, They scroll maybe. her in the river to make it look like Grossman did it. Mm. I, yeah. I'd have to I'd have to look at Lulu's body to you know I mean, th th well you'd have to look at Lulu's body to find that out but uh, as far as Anna that's not what happened to her I I saw I should, sure her ripped been thrown out a seconds uh, unfortunately before I'd gotten there but then I think what if and I don't doubt what you saw but we had right. some beers and some, some vodka and then some schnapps and it was late so there's two I didn't have any of that. <laughs> Two of these thugs, no, no. yeah, they follow this Anna, right? Because she's on their list. They've got the secret Grossman list. And they like hit this man in the back of the head and he loses memory. And they they attack with his teeth thing. And they uh, hear you running and they shove his face in it and run away. 
the, the missing link here, uh, Otto, is do we know Grossman's politics? Do we know if he was affiliated with these right fingers? Uh, because otherwise, how would they know about his list? Uh, well, we know turned. he liked to, to kill the Eastern European there, right? Astrid. Could have just been convenience. Um, Astrid has just found a key, a key thing, the list of people who Grossman did not make either as you say, he had a group of friends and they knew that doesn't make sense because they would have killed him a long time ago. Well, um, besides, but, well. but the only other people who know about the list are us and the detective and the, uh, the Konstantinovich. Yeah. It's possible Konstantinovich himself could be an insane murderer. Apparently he's I mean, a foreigner. I, I, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I can tell you that, that, that they, it was not manipulated. I mean, her, her voice back, her voice box was, was in his lap. I mean, it, 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 th there was no way that they could have set that up within the time between from me hearing the screaming to it happening. So I don't know about the other murders, but I know for, for Anna, unfortunately, I, I think that the only explanation here is that, that it was Conrad. And Mr. Mr. Schultz did not seem like one of these air harbor grades. What if, he seems like quite a bourgeois. Uh, what if it man. was some form of mesmerism? Mm, Possible, I suppose. I'm, I, I, I don't know about any of that. I think we need more, more evidence, gentlemen. And so I propose that we, we, we initiate some type of investigation into. Grossman's uh, living facility where he lived, right. as well as his garden where he where he processed the meat. Um, I also propose an investigation to the asylum. That's uh, what because, that's what we should do next. Yeah, yeah I feel because, like because if they have, if somehow these women are being targeted, then she will be one of the women. We need to get to the uh, asylum. Yeah, Great. we can't blame the prince. His uh... What is she? Niece, cousin? Did he we say? We don't know. He didn't say. I'm I'm beginning to suspect because of the pictures that she might be a member of the imperial family. There's always been oh, rumors that maybe some of them escaped. Then we have several reasons to make sure that no uh, no uh, maniacs of one kind or another tell mm. his fault. That's that's for sure. So, doctor, could you arrange a visit for us? I feel like we need a good good treatment team. Yeah, let me make some phone calls. I have an idea if to, to try out if we can both get in there. Let me see if I can make some phone calls. Uh, so All I'll right. go to near, the nearest phone. All right. So uh, what you find out, the Daldorf, uh, the public hours that uh, you can have visitors are from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. It is kept in, it is in the northwest edge of the city and you would you would have already known it's kind of uh, away from the main living areas it's almost like a almost like in a central park kind of thing uh, in a silent yep mm -hmm. oh. but yeah uh, yep they but you are free to come visit and especially if you I assumed you introduced yourself as a doctor then yeah like, I'm not coming oh, to yeah. To just visit but yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. for, for professional reasons yeah okay we can set that up i don't think we should all go in but uh i asked it definitely uh and uh but asked it definitely auto maybe yeah i i took i i had my uh day off today which reminds me you were saying about the uh interest we have sometimes in the unusual mm. On my way here, I was walking, and this uh, this um, crippled twenty-ish man runs down the street. His leg is all wrong, like a horse leg, like the knee is in the wrong direction. Runs down the street, knocks over a woman for no reason, and so I go after the little punk, and uh, I turn two corners, and there's a dead end alley. He had to go down it, and I cannot find him anywhere. It disappears like this. Was there um, like a sword grate? 
yeah, I couldn't pry it up. It was all begrimed. Uh, the only window was three stories high. Uh, and I knocked on the wall to see if there was a doorway or something. The only thing I found, which is, is nothing, is that the uh, between the ground and that window, three stories high, there are uh, patches of clean brick. Like somebody made a nice circle and cleaned it up good and then went up another several feet and cleaned it up good. Did it look like maybe... Like, like maybe circus. he circus something. Yeah. Oh, there's another circus. We have two circus things. We have, have a, a wild bear and a circus performer as yeah, possible. Yeah, the circus has cripples in the freak show. Yeah. But it's usually the, the, the Russians. We don't like the Russians right now. Yeah. And they have Italian circus also. Oh, that's you true. Look at the papers. Yeah, somebody who does some sort of wall climbing act, because there was an open window. Three stories up. Yeah, three stories up. But he was pretty fast for somebody who's all bent up. Do you know, I, uh, sometime before we are busy, I'm going to go and see the front of that building and get the street number and see what's mm. on this third floor. Now I want another coffee at other schnapps because- Oh, yeah. Uh, Ah uh, yes, coffee Long stops. Two days. Because we are going to be going amongst the mad, I, I think that uh, yeah, we need to fortify ourselves. Ah oh, yes, no problem, no problem. I've, I, have I maybe been to um, at the Dolph yeah. Asylum? Yeah, okay. I'm sure you have. Yeah, it's a little spooky. So, from what I understand, uh, Hans, Astrid, and Otto are going there. Max and Gustav, what were your plans while they went to the doll door? Um, mm. Mm. Do so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I guess I guess we could uh, potentially head over and check out Grossman's place. Yeah, that's that's also up kind of in the northern part of the city too. Yeah. So that, that so we can kind of go convenient. together. Well, by which place? Because the garden shed was in the north. Grossman's oh. apartment was uh, near where all the prostitutes are. Oh, I guess we could. Should we do we want to check out the uh, shed and be close to the others, or? Yeah, it's convenient yeah. that way. We can meet up, find a new cafe for a change. And you know, Gustav, the the. Uh, the Von Cynic, the insane, they give me a little bit the shakes. So maybe you go with them, and, and Max and I will play detective at the uh, okay. sausage house. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine either way. All right, perfect. All right, so you guys take the take the uh, public train, or in, unless one of you had a vehicle. <laughs> yeah. What and about? just just to avoid any like background stuff, Astrid's gonna stop by her apartment real quick before before we leave off, and she's grabbing some of her supplies. Right. Yeah. She has that in her purse. Okay. And her tiny stash of cocaine. Yeah. yeah, and she also she also purchases some cocaine. Uh, let me get my sniff here from her neighbor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, her no dealer problem, neighbor. No problem. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> I, I hear that hear they used to put this in cola. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, look, leads, okay, leads first, Coke later, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, well, you guys uh, split up uh, where the uh, train uh, lines separate. Max and Gustav head off to the garden shed, and we'll cut over to the uh, Daldorf. So, Oh, the Daldorf is a uh, massive uh, park. -like. It's in the middle of a massive park-like forest that lends the institution a distinctly rural feel. And uh, but you know, like I said, you get in there during uh, public hour, so it's not like you have to sneak in or anything. So. Did you want to go with the model or? Uh, no, Gustav, you take the hospital. I don't want to be on so many crazies. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so you'll you'll go with Max then, yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, so Hans, Astrid, and Gustav are, go to the doll door. Okay, so uh, you go in as as you go in, you know, you get that distinct uh, ammonia smell that uh, you get in, you know, when they clean and everything, and uh, the uh, 
the receptionist, he looks up and he's he's like, oh, I, yes, oh, Dr. Hans, uh, go, good to see you again. He's like, oh, I, I was told that you had called and might be coming here. I'm, I'm here to see a patient. Uh, now, I'm not sure how she's registered. Uh, I think it's um, uh, Sensnowski. Or possibly... Uh, he gets out his uh, book and kind of flips through. He's like, uh, no one, no one, uh, no one uh, here under that name. Hmm, no? She has a name. Uh, oh, um, Francesca, uh, Francisca. Oh, here we go. Um, uh, uh, says uh, says Noska. So says Noski. Jemnovska. Um, no, no. Well, we are looking for a particular woman. Um, we're, we're, um, uh, uh, do I, perhaps I need to talk to somebody in charge. Oh, yeah. If you want to talk to uh, the the doctor. Sure, I'll talk to the doctor. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so, so the doctor is Fritz. Doctor Fritz Hassenpfeffer. Sure. <laughs> Fritz Hoffenstetter. So uh, he, he comes out and he's like going, ah, Dr. Dr. Hans. Fritz, it's nice to see you. Uh, we are working on a missing persons case and we have reason to believe that perhaps two years ago uh, she was checked into this hospital. Is that, is that correct information, gentlemen? Uh, Aspen. Yeah, um, she would have been Polish, uh, right. or she had a heaven ru heavy Russian accent. Uh, mm. And uh, from what we understand, she was going by the name of uh, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, she was also a dancer. Mm -hmm. um, and she may have had some connections with uh, Herr Grossman. Herr Grossman. Oh, well, I mean, I could understand why she would uh, need traumatized. some help if she'd ran. Yes, uh, uh, almost a shell shock experience for mm -hmm. her. Uh, I would have to go through my records, but I don't recognize the name. Well, if you would be so kind, it would be a, a great deal of help for us. She may be under, she may be anonymous. She may be whatever the German It's possible, Jane yeah. Is. Oh. See if you can find a Russian woman who was checked in about two years ago. About two years ago? Uh, any idea why she she would have been checked in? Was it possibly a possibly traumatized from Grossman. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if... Perhaps she came in for mutism or uh, some type of psychotic break. Mm. Hysteria, that's, maybe. Well, yeah, let's let's go back. I mean, you, you it'd be of course so much uh, quick easier if you. Uh, oh, oh, she she attempted in. suicide. She oh. attempted to jump into the river. That's why oh. she came in. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Let's go, come, 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 come with me. Let's go through the records together. So he, he brings you back, and they got uh, you know their filing cabinet, and everything. But he's like, uh, he starts digging through two years ago. He gets out some files, hands it to Astrid. Gets some files out, hands them to Gustav, and mm -hmm. the Hans, and you start going through. And then everyone, give me a medicine roll to kind of read these charts mm -hmm. and. <laughs> Can I use yeah. libraries instead? Uh, sure, sure, but you're gonna need a higher level of success. Okay. I got a, I got a hard. Okay. Yeah. I got a Twenty-three out of. <laughs> uh, no, not right. sixty-five. No, I did not pass. Okay. No, yeah, I failed. All right. So you're you're there working with a hard. It's gonna take you a, a about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. We figured so. Digging through, but you do find a. Uh, a enter, uh, entry that you believe is it. It was a suicide uh, admitted in February of 1920. As Astrid uh, predicted, she was known as uh, Fraulein Un Un Unbekannt, or uh, Miss Unknown, so a uh, Jane Doe, essentially. She was fished out of the Landwehr Canal. 
She was suffering from amnesia and hysterics upon admittance. The patient had uh, extensive wounding and scarring on her arms, hands, legs, and many of the wounds are fresh and appear to be human bite marks. So uh, her, they never gave her a new name. Uh, she never, they never ascertained what her uh, real name was, but she began referring to herself as Anna Tchaikovsky. Anna Tchaikovsky. Yep. And she was discharged last month and into the custody of a Baron Arthur Van Kleist. And Gustav, you can give me a law roll on that one. Ooh, no, I did not month. get that one. Uh, 68, right. so I failed. All right. Um, you see, yeah, well, can you get that name one more time? Uh, Baron Arthur, Arthur Von Kleist. Thank you. Yep. Could I do a history roll? That would uh, that be helpful? Or yeah, like yeah. newspaper roll? If we read his name in the newspaper? Uh, you can give me a... A no roll, no. Yeah, but we're gonna need a heart. Um, I got fifty six out of seventy five, so regular. I, I no. did not pass. Okay. No, don't don't know him. So this looks like a name we'll have to investigate. Uh, Doctor Fritz, do you remember anything about the Baron Arthur von Kleist? He's like a. Uh, Duh, he was a, uh, a aristocratic man. Uh, had a thick Prussian, ac uh, thick Polish accent. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Uh, were you under her direct care? Were you Were you one of her treating physicians? I was. Yes, I was. Ah, uh, what What do you remember about this woman? Yeah. Uh, about her, uh, that that once we got her calmed down. At first, uh, she just kept talking about about uh, seeing eyes, bulging eyes, in her in her nightmares, mm. and then she uh, kept kept talking about her family and uh, watching them be shot in front of her. Mm. Did she ever mention anything about royalty? Being no. of royalty? No. Um, any maybe delusions of, of grandeur or delusions that she, you know. Well, I mean, was... you know, she, I, she, I mean, I don't know if you call it a delusion. A baron was interested in her once, uh, mm -hmm. but she said, said that she did know some of the, uh, some of the uh, aristocrats of Poland. No, not the royals. So she was a woman of means then, you could tell. She was a woman of refinement. Uh -huh. We'll say. What was her diagnosis? Uh, she was suffering from uh, amne uh, severe amnesia, which may have been from, uh, you know, uh, blow to the head or the shock of the uh, water and uh, severe de depression. We believe that she was in fact an escaped victim of Grossman. Oh yes, yeah, so that, that would probably uh, explain the, uh, some of the trauma that she, she experienced. In fact, she may not have even uh, committed attempted suicide she may have been thrown into her ever by Grossman. Quite possible. I mean, she didn't remember how she got in the river. And uh, you had said when she arrived, what would you say she was? A uh, late teenager? Uh, she would have been, this is 22. And... Uh, she would have been, where is her character? There she is. Uh, she would have been May, early 20s at most. What was her prognosis when she left? Were, 
was she was she responding well to treatment? Uh, she uh, she was. I mean, she was uh, beginning to talk. She was uh, very withdrawn around strangers. It's almost like you had to uh, show her that you know that that she could trust you, whether that was through. So she uh, liked to have a. Uh, uh, icon, icon. I mean, I, I hate to say it. It was odd, I thought, but maybe it's because I'm in Germany. She liked to have the swastika uh, drawn for her. She said it, it gave her a feeling of her mother. Yeah. And she would open up when you... Uh... So this woman is, I believe, the woman we are looking for. Yes, that, oh. that's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. Do you have... Do you have uh, like the address of this um, this baron? Uh, I he digs in the paper and That's it is paper, right? at uh, he is the address is a uh, at the in Char Charlottenburg, which uh, Astrid would definitely know as cheekily known as Charlatan Grad. It's essentially Little Russia in in Berlin. And it is a uh, a hotel suite that he has. And uh, how did he gain authority to take her out of the hospital? Oh, well, he has uh, connections with the police and uh, government officials. Hmm. So all of his paperwork was in order then? Yes. And she went along willingly with him? She did. She didn't, she didn't evince any type of uh, hesitancy when this strange oh. man showed up, or did she seem oh. like she knew him? Uh, I, I wouldn't know if she, she knew it. He seemed to know her, and he said uh, when he talked to her in private, she was very she when they emerged she was very comfortable with with him like they had a uh, a connection or he knew of her past how old is this uh, baron did you did you what would you say an old man a young man yes yes he's an old man an old man all right thank you very much yes thank you ah thank you for no your problem time. and uh we will uh, thank you very much. Yeah. And Hans, uh, you know, uh, anytime you want to come out of retirement, we could always use help. Oh, well, go for it. Yes, of course. Uh, well, you know, I'm always on for consultant if you need something. Um, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I, I'm sorry we, we are so busy today. Um, I should have asked about your, your wife, Margaret, and uh, your children. Uh, 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 oh, right. And. Adolf, yes, yes, he's Beatrice. He's good. Yes, and Beatrice. Oh, the light of my eye. Yes, she's doing well. Uh, I don't know if she's ever going to get married, but you know, there's so much less available men, unfortunately, nowadays. Well, we'll see. But thank you very much for your help. Uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Shane, Doctor. All right. So, uh, so when we get outside, um. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm starting to put together some things in my mind. That's crazy. But you know, there's always been a rumors that not all of the Imperial family were, were murdered, that some of them may have gotten out. Based on the age, I'm wondering if this could actually be the Grand Duchess, Anastasia, Anastasia. It's uh, horrible to think that she went from being the mm -hmm. Grand Duchess of Russia to being a prostitute. But I suppose we can work out that later. We need to find out where she is. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, let's yeah. find this Baron. Well, we have to get back together with the others before. We yes, right. yeah, we need to figure that out. But it sounds like she's probably in very comfortable. Uh, conditions. Now. It's possible he knew her. Oh. He may have been on the well. Imperial Court. Well, be for now, it, it, that's what it seemed. All right. So Max and Otto, 
you guys uh, make it out to the, uh, uh, let's see, the, the Lonsberger Chaus in the Sherba Gardens. Uh, so this is a uh, part of Berlin where people maintain little gardens. It's a, like a little co-op almost, where it gives them a feel where they can uh, feel like they're back on, on the farm, but still living in the city. Maybe people have a very small plot with a little shack on it, you know, not, not anywhere where you could live. And, you know. So you show up and, uh, yep, there's about 50 uh, garden, garden shacks here. Max, uh, is it, do you think this is the uh, shack that he took Lulu to? Is that what we are looking for? Uh, yes, that is, uh, that is what we're looking for, uh, the place where he made his sausages. And I assume they're having a hard time renting the place. I would imagine so. It would have to be a complete mess. How do you, um, I'm, I'm, I would want to waste as little time finding the places like we can. Do we just want to ask the other gardeners, or do you think they'll chase us off with pitchforks? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I can't imagine he would be a very popular neighbor now that, now that they know. Um, but I don't think, I don't think they, would th they would chase us away, do you? Well, let's say we are looking for empty space first, yeah? Yeah. We wish to find a garden for our own what's available. All right. So, so it's a superintendent. It's yeah, it's obvious which one is the superintendent. There is a uh, a woman there, probably in her mid fifties. Um, she's uh, you know, she's in good shape. She's outside working in a garden all day, so you know, she's she's in in good shape and very attractive for a uh, fifty five year old old woman. You know, so it's nice. She looks up and she's like, "Oh, uh, welcome, uh, uh, possible future tenants." Yeah, that's exactly right. We might find one plot or two. Do you have two next to each other? That might be very good. How many uh, empty do you have? This is a pretty, it looks like there's a lot of uh, healthy activity here. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, we, we do, do stay, stay open. We have about three plots that, that are empty. Uh, you know, some, they, they look a little rough because no one's kept it up, but we found that a uh, new prospect of uh, tenants like to get the feeling of cleaning it, cleaning up the, the plot and it gives them a little ownership. Yeah, exactly. It makes it, uh, it makes you feel like you have your own spot. Yeah. It's like, oh no, can I show you, show you? My name's uh, Johanna Pockenkoff, Pickenkoff. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm very happy to meet you, uh, Alfaro Pickenkopf. This yes. is Max Hoffman. I'm Otto Rector. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's wonderful to meet you. So you said you wanted uh, maybe one or two? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, depending on the price and the space and so on. Okay. Are all the spaces the same, all the lots the same size? Uh, yes, in, in general, we fi find that it keeps it more peaceful if everyone's uh, kind of equal. Very good. So she takes you uh, around, and of course, you know most of them are quite nice. Or you do see some children out there working on it, maybe growing some uh, some tomatoes or uh, cucumbers and all. And she brings you to the uh, first one. She and it's a uh, it's nice. It's painted and and everything. She's like, oh, this one's been available for. Uh, for about the last three months and all the uh the owner he he passed away he got old and and uh and you know died he died a, a very happy life you know and the plots look very nice yep looks just, uh, just look, fallow yep yep yeah fallow yeah nothing there no. the uh takes you in shows it off it's a shed with a stove in it and and all but yeah Mm -hmm. Very nice. And uh, she takes you along. She comes to another one. That this one's a little more overgrown. Uh, the uh, small timber structure is about ten foot square. It's got a pitched roof with uh, one window, and the paint is a blue green that's starting to peel. And the uh, plot is pretty overgrown. And do any of you have like a uh, botany or nature? 
I'm such a city kid, actually. Yeah. I was looking earlier to see if I had natural world for this reason, when I do not have anything. Okay. No, I, I have. Know. I could. I have. So I have a, a praise though, so I can uh. at least figure out the condition of the shack. Say. If okay. Yeah. Found. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll buy that. Yeah. Give me an appraise. Anything for you, Max? That you could. Uh, I, I have the minimum in all those. All right. You can I'm... always roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I'll roll. roll. I rolled a 49 for my 45. Uh, is it preposterous to try to push it and say, hey, both flirt with the Frau and also say, I'd like to peek in the window and really get a sense of the structure? No, that, that, to the buildings. that wouldn't be preposterous. Uh, if you fail on a push to praise roll, I'm going to say that you're going to... Uh, while you're kind of uh, looking around on it and all you, you might uh, break, break the, the glass kind of, uh, oh, you yeah, know, how's this glass? And, and you could end up cutting yourself on that. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I rolled a 73. Oh, so well, as you're kind of appraising it, the glass is- step on a rake. Yeah. So as you kind of push, you, your hand goes through, and we'll say you you cut yourself for one point. You know, oh, oh, oh my goodness! How about you, Max? Oh, geez. <laughs> um. Oh no, I died. No, no, no. no. Okay. I all feel right. very foolish. Oh, oh, it's it's all right. The the previous yes. owner never maintain never maintained this. Hey, let let me uh, get get you a bandage. She's like, I'll I'll be right back, and she she uh, kind of runs off to her shack. So you know she'll she'll be gone for about twenty minutes or so. Because yeah, so I'm gonna press this handkerchief to my arm and let's give this place a good look. Is that meat hooks? Does it smell smoky? All right, uh, it does. It does. You, you, it, when you open it up, you get a uh, definite smell of smoked sausage. Yeah. Inside, there's a single wood burning stove, and on the shelf, on the there's like a shelf uh, running along near the top of the ceiling, and there's about a hundred garden gnomes stacked there, staring down into the middle of the uh, shack. Himmel. I don't remember reading anything in the newspaper about him being. Uh, Kitch, kitch monster. No. The first thing happens is those go out. Yes, that's quite disturbing with all the gnomes looking at you. Yeah, I think they go on the river where he, had the, where he left his victims. They sink like stones. Uh, okay, I think we found it, Max. Uh, and if you'd be nice and look for the third place, in case it has a sign on it saying Grossmann murder shark. But yeah. I'd say since I broke the window, even though it's the least desirable one, maybe you can give me a deal. We'll take this one, yeah? I, I think they should be able to give us a deal. I mean... And then we can try the floorboards and uh, get rid of those things. Yes, we can. Yes. She should be willing to give it pretty cheap. I would think so in the state of things. Uh, especially if anyone came by and talked to the neighbors, they might learn the provenance of this shack. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you guys uh, going to wait for her to come back? I, I, yeah, I think we can. All right. So she, she comes back and she has a uh, bandage and she kind of uh, wraps up your, your wound. It's not too bad. And she's like going, oh, uh, so uh, what, do you, what do you think, gentlemen? Well, of course, if you have one third, we'd like to look at it. But I think, you know, this place already, I have broken up a little bit. And uh, we want some things that, that we can put some labor in. Yeah, so this might be the one. But let's see the third in case we fall in love. Okay, yeah. So she takes you to the third one. And, you know, it's, uh, it's well maintained. She tells you that, you know, it, the owner he lost his job and so he couldn't maintain the uh the lease on it anymore yeah well you have a you run a very lovely little operation here uh from uh and i think we'll take the ones I, i'll fix the window on 
Oh, yeah. we'll clean I, the place up, make it nice looking like the neighbors. Oh, I, I, I must tell you, so, so you don't feel like I pulled the uh, wool over your eye. Uh, that was, uh, the, you're, I'm assuming you're familiar, the, that was the shack that Grossman, that, that monster, that was the shack he, he owned. Oh, or least. Oh. oh, well then. Um, see, I'm not superstitious, but it's all the more reason to clean the, the place up, yeah? Get rid of all the whatever stench yeah, of evil. What do you think, Max? I think that is good. It would be good for the, good for the area. I'm willing to take it on. Yeah, well, maybe we can get a little, a, a slight discount. Oh well, lots of work. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I could uh, probably draw up a contract there and all. He's he's like, go on, go on. He's like, well, let's go back and uh, and just kind of uh, check it out. So we'll want to uh, document, you know, any uh, any defects in it. You know, that way you can we can make sure that they're documented in the contract. You know, lawyers. Yeah, of course. Well, sounds quite good. You're very kind. You're very kind. Woman, oh, well, I'm just uh, happy to have someone here to maintain it. It's uh, mm -hmm. been a been a blight. The ch keeping the children away of, has been a uh, chore. Mm. Yeah, I'm surprised there weren't more broken windows. Well, that's because uh, you, you can. That's an testament to uh, to my watchful eye, and you can be sure that that it, it will be kept kept safe always. I always saw what was going on around here. Oh. So, it's like, so she takes you back to the shack and she's like, she goes and she uh, starts documenting. She's like, well, the door, you know, the door's a little, little, little uh, the hinges, a little bad. And she goes in and she's like going and, uh, the garden gnomes are uh, were a odd choice of his. Yeah, so they came with the, he did he make them or did he collect them or? I don't know. I think he. Uh, I mean, I don't. Well, let, let's speak ill of the dead. Who cares? He was a fool, a fool and a monster. In this uh, my, case, I think we can speak ill of the dead. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that he uh, used them to try and lure children, but of course, I warned the children to stay away from him. I, we all know that uh, his unsavory desires for children. Yeah. God, yeah, yeah. What kind of, uh, what what kind of tenant was he? Was he? Did he pay on time? He he did pay on time. He paid early. I mean, he would bring women here quite often, and sometimes they would leave bruised and battered. I, I, I would ask them if they needed protection, but you know, and you guys can give me a psychology roll on her. Oh no! <laughs> Not my strong suit either. I'm All afraid. right. Like I'd ask them if they needed help, but uh, they, 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 they didn't. They were clearly prostitutes, and so uh, they, they came in and got what they deserved. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Found yeah. some cop. Uh, but yeah, we'll get this place uh, cleaner than you remember no time soon. Oh, yeah. good. Let me go go grab the standard standard contract, and I'll be right back. So she she walks off. All right, Max. Uh, uh, do you want to look at the gnomes or uh, rifle through the woodwork? Because if I can find anything to get out of here, I don't want to do business with that woman. She gives me the creeps. Um, I will. Uh, I'll take the gnomes if you want to take the woodwork. Thank you. I don't want to touch those damn gnomes. I, I, mi I might not be terribly careful with them. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Max, so are you going to uh, just brute force go through each gnome or just kind of like 
But I don't think no. I want to make a complete mess of things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to look like I've actually just, you know, tossed a place. Um, but, you know, I think I want to kind of be a little bit, a little bit careful uh, to some extent. Okay. Did you say there were maybe a hundred gnomes? Yep. I, I How will... many names are in his book? I don't remember. You saw the book. Is it closer to 50 or 100 or 200? It was closer yeah. to 100. But if he's got a gnome for each, each victim, yeah? That is entirely likely. And so look at these... one carefully before you smash anything. But maybe we find inside teeth or something. Jesus, this is hideous. Yeah. Do, do you think he put bits? in the gnomes? If he puts bits in the verse, why would he put bits in the gnomes? You can't put teeth in sausage. No, no. I'll, I'll shake a few. Okay. See what I can hear. All right. Uh, yeah. uh, I wish I had thought of that because that's awesome. But yeah, you don't hear any teeth <laughs> in there. <laughs> uh, no. No, no uh, teeth. No teeth, but but give me a spot hidden while you're here digging through. <laughs> okay. Yes, I made that. That is a, a forty right. out of sixty-five. Okay. So as you're kind of going through shaking it, one you pick up and it does feel slightly heavier. And when you shake it, you know, because the, the ones you were shaking, you know, there's probably dirt or little rocks in there and everything. This one does not shake at all. It's, does, it, does it feel heavier than the others? It, it does. It feels like there's something in it. And of course, you know, they're kind of hollowed out at the bottom with the little hole little. where they, yeah. And okay. when you flip it, I assume you flip it over? Yeah. And when you flip it over, you see like a doll's leg sticking out. Like a raggedy, kind of like a raggedy and doll, you know, so not, not like a Barbie doll, but like a raggedy and doll's uh, leg kind of sticking out of the hole at the bottom. Okay. Um, I'll kind of carefully tug at it okay. and see if I can get it you, out in one piece. All right. So you kind of uh, work at it. It comes out. It, it is like a, uh, a rag doll with little button eyes. It has a blue, blue dress. It's kind of dirty and, and, and filthy but you know it looks like something that you know a grandma would have made her daughter out out on the farm hmm. what do you make of this auto i uh, sorry it's a, i was waiting for motorcycle uh <laughs> how affordable for us as a group would be a lease in this place for a couple months to to do a a long sort of dig. Is it, is it, do we want to, is it practical for us to cut and run or should, or is it reasonable for us to stick around and be able to have access to this crime scene? Uh, let me look at you guys' credit rating. Uh, for Max and Gustav, it's not reasonable at all. I mean, their credit rating is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, Otto and Dr. Hans, they, they could rent it without out a problem. Astrid, it'd, it'd be a little tight for, for her. And if we, and if, if it helps us find the prince's relative, yeah. who might be a Tsarina, then it will be completely worth the expense. Okay. All right. So All right. I, I think uh, I think we have to look more closely. Is what I have to say. You see, you All find right. that terrible thing, which is maybe a keepsake of a child victim, and All maybe right. he has other, you know, he keeps other remnants of them. Uh, and who knows, there are bones under under the daffodils and what. Okay. So we we don't break anything now. We make nice with this horrible woman. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good plan. All right. So uh, as you're coming out, she's walking back, and where are you holding? Are you uh, are you hanging onto the doll, Max? Um, if I can pocket the the, if I can okay. pocket that and put the yeah. gnome back. Give me a. I don't want to get my system sleight of hand, or is that what it is in Call of Cthulhu? Is it yeah, DVDs? that's it. Okay, yeah. Give me a sleight of hand. Uh. Oh, geez, that's terrible. That's an All right. 
Want to push it? <laughs> sure. Okay. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to push it? Um, I'm gonna kind of uh, kind of do that that where you stoop and like you're picking it up off the ground and go, oh, what's this? Okay. All right. Uh, if you fail, she's probably gonna she's gonna think that you are just thieves. Right now, if she just you you she could probably sell it off. Oh, hey, I just found this. But if you failed the slide, she's gonna be like, "Oh, you came here to rob the place." Yeah, I don't have a very high stat in that, uh, so I don't think I'm gonna try not. Okay, to all right. Yeah. So I'm back can, off. As she's walking back, she sees you with the doll, and she stops. And then her voice is not her voice anymore. Her eyes almost bug out, and she's like. It's not nice to touch other people's property. And her neck starts growing out to two feet. And you guys can give me a sanity roll. <laughs> oh, that is a fail. Uh, a fail. Oh, ouch. Man, I only failed by one. Oh, well. That seems like you might as well blow out if you're going to yeah, fail. Yeah, that's right. A 1d6. It's a five. Oh, that's uh, too bad. <laughs> I only I got a one. Maybe it's the coke. Okay, <laughs> the coke's got you. Okay, uh, Max, give me an intelligence roll. That is also a fail. Oh, well, that's good. That's, that's good. good. Your your mind kind of protected you from what you saw. So she uh, she uh, her head comes out out growing in there. And then she starts kind of lumbering towards you, and you're not sure if she's if her whole body is starting to kind of grow in proportion. Her claw, her fingernails are turning almost into claws, and she's like, "Give it back!" I just throw it at her. <laughs> throw it. <laughs> okay, Otto. Uh, I think that's a good call, Max. Um, so we were we, we were we were coming out of the hut and she came yep. up. Out, so yep, she was kind of walking down the uh, path. Uh, I, Frau Sabenstoff, Kopf, we're ready to sign when you are. And yeah. think, we, as we saw you, we didn't know that doll was yours. Gee. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> and while goes, I'm while I'm bullshitting, I'm gonna prepare my yeah. sword cane. Yeah, so she she picks up the doll and she looks at it and she kind of pauses there. So you guys get a free action as she kind of looks at the doll, almost like like a loving memory. So uh let's see who's got the faster decks out of you two. That auto, you uh you will be able to act, act before Max. Jeez, Max got a slow one. <laughs> uh, all right, she's looking loving at it all. We're not gonna be able to sign a lease on this place. Uh so I'm gonna I'm gonna scream at Max to run. See, I assume the garden has a couple of exits. Yeah. So we, and we've seen the closest. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's scream run, try to get past her with a slash of the sword cane and down okay. the lane. All right. Okay, give me a uh, fighting brawl with your slash. This sure went strange quick. Yeah, yeah. it is. That's why I was like, yes. <laughs> so I have, I have, uh, so I'm not using the sword cane with the sword cane skill. I'm using it because I'm fleeing. I'm just slashing. Yeah. So it's yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. That's unsuccessful. 42 for 25. That was okay. She rolled a 99. So she was 42 nowhere. She was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Max, and what are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to get. You're, no. you're sprinting? All right. Okay, you guys go sprinting. The thing does not give chase. But Otto, give me a power roll. Uh, that's better. That's a 19. 19, which is so that's what? A, oh. that's, a, that's a hard, not an extreme. Okay. All right. So uh, so as you're, as you're uh, running out, 
you hear hear the thing kind of laughing and uh screams out he's like the horse will die the land streets will be flushed with the horse blood that escalated quickly that's yeah all right we have to find the farouk to murder and meet the others we have yes. a new theory i think yes and i want it is several snobs snobs yeah <laughs> Did you see it? Was it the neck? Right? It was the neck. It was the neck and the claws and it's, yeah. She's not. How how did she do that? It's on Heimlich. She's not. It's not a. It's not a woman. No. So maybe, oh, the thing is a murder garden. Maybe she said she knows everything that happens there. Maybe under every plot there's children's bones. It could be. It could be. I don't know. How many blocks to the help to murder bitter? Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll say uh, about about five blocks. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Oh, God. So you guys, you guys meet up. Uh, I think we get there first. And yes, yeah, you get there first because uh, Hans and them were digging through paperwork, very exciting paperwork, and the <laughs> the asylum. And uh, you got they they end up walking up unless you guys wanted to go somewhere else besides your meeting place and Otto and Max are enjoying uh, they have uh, several empty glasses of schnapps <laughs> we're just kind of sauntering in oh how was your all this afternoon was there anything anything interesting started what drinking kind of early it was yeah. terrible it was terrible it was absolutely terrible it's frightening what happened oh we found we found Grossman's little little shack and Inside, it was all of these gnomes. Gnomes? gnomes? Yes, the little garden gnomes, all of them. Okay. How very and, kitsch. Yes, there were about a about hundred of them. And Does that number uh, anything for you? Does that number suggest something? In yeah. His little, yeah? Uh -huh. Maybe he got one for each victim. Was there anything written on the bottom of them? Is it nice? We don't, I, not, did you see something else? You pulled something out of a hole at the bottom. Was there a name or something? I thought maybe he put the names of each victim. I suppose the police would have seen that, huh? No, I, I didn't see anything written on the gnomes. Uh, oh. One of them did have a little doll stuffed. Wait, wait, wait Max. Uh, hold on, Max. Uh, zwei Schop, Schnop, uh, actually, schnapps for all, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch you guys have a drink. So we get to this place, cute little garden site. Uh, uh, Frau Schleifenkopf is the is the lady who runs the place. Yeah, she seems to, you know maybe right wing, but fine. She shows us one shack, it's fine. She shows us the next one. It looks like the place. Yeah. So I try to open the window. I cut my arm, and I have to clean this very carefully because it's evil. But inside we see the, the creepy gnomes. And then the lady says, oh yeah, I think he wanted them because they, he wanted the children to come. And I knew he was evil, but I didn't do anything about it. And we are confused by this, right? right? Sounds, so you're sounds like a horrible woman. But we think, okay, we have time. We'll rent a place. We'll look everywhere, yeah? And then Max, he finds, describes this thing. This is it, uh it was uh, made out of cloth, uh, very cute, blue dress, button eyes, uh, something that any any little girl would have. Mm -hmm. And the bottom of this gnome, right? Yeah, it was. It, it was. Back. Yes. So the lady comes back with the paperwork. This woman, this attractive 50, 55 year old woman. And she sees yeah. the doll, and she doesn't say, oh, where'd you find that? Or, oh, that's cute. She says, what? Give it back to me. Yeah? Yeah. And her eyes are like, you won't, you won't believe this next part. You won't believe this next part, I promise. But it really happened. They both her, see the same thing. Yes, her eyes bugged out, and her neck elongated. 
and she grew claws and she was coming for us. And so I threw the doll at her because she wanted it. Yeah. And she catches the doll and that stops her and we run past and run down the lane. Yeah. Yeah. And we think, maybe I think he's crazy and he thinks I'm crazy. And she calls from behind. She says, All the horse will die. How are you doing that with your voice? Run with blood. It's like a, not a woman at all, like a monster voice, like this deep. Uh, it's in, and, she's, and she laughs, yeah? She laughed, oh. right, Lance? Oh, yes, yeah, she laughed. Terrible. Huh. I, was I, mean, that, that, I, I mean, regularly, I, I, would, I, I wouldn't believe you, but with both of you and with what happened last night, uh, I mean, a long neck would explain how somebody would get to somebody in the trees. Oh, oh, I did not think of that, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I do believe she did, actually, her, her body maybe also grew in size as well, I think. I, I, it's it's, it's terrifying it. when a woman just suddenly walks up behind you and grabs something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. oh, dear God. Ah. Uh, how much hey. have you been drinking? Yeah, Fräulein, uh, let's let's stop the, the schnapps now. We um, had nothing before we came to this cafe. All right, uh, we know there's something weird going on. This is very disturbing. And we give you our information. Yeah, uh, yeah Baron, Apparently she was there at the, at the hospital, and, uh, and the Baron Arthur von She was Christ. there. She was, but she was taken only a month ago. By uh, Baron uh, Baron Arthur von Kleist. Kleist. Arthur I wonder, von Kleist. I wonder if he's I wonder if he's related to uh, what is it uh, Heinrich von Kleist, the author, the poet. Yeah, oh, could be. You know, there's hmm. a Broshi Krug, the uh, broken jug, the poem. Interesting. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, she, uh, she, you said he took her away? Yeah, apparently, apparently he knew her. Uh, and right. my, my theory now, I said earlier that I thought she might be a member of the imperial family. There's always been rumors, you know, that some of the children may have escaped, like Anastasia. Uh, I wonder, she'd be about 21 years old now. She would be a good candidate. Well, we do you issues. do you think we can go tonight? Because it's it's evening now. Do you think we can go tonight to that hotel, or should we would, should we wait for tomorrow? To talk to the prince. To talk to this baron. To talk to Baron von. Uh, I don't know if he would let us in, uh, so we we may need to have some type of excuse. Perhaps Prince Konstantinovich could. Tell us. Do you uh, want to? Permission. Do you want to surprise him, or do you want to call ahead and warn him that we are coming? I would say if this von Kleist, who has better information than Konstantinovich, you got to, you got to. Uh, she got to her first. Her life may be in danger. Her. Yeah. Yeah, well, her life is certainly in danger because there's yeah. a monster that lives in a garden that wants to kill all the women. This is wrong neck. Yeah, you don't. It's not. It's not wrong. Okay, so, it's so big. right. So, perhaps we. So we, we 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 don't want him to, to know ahead of time. So we we go and we see this baron, and if if they ask us why we want to see this woman and why we're there, we ex we explain or show you know we explain about the list, and that this woman. Is her life is in danger, and that's why we're there, which is not a lie, technically. Well, it's possible, as Otto said, it's possible if he was at some point appointed to the imperial family that he might have recognized her. I mean, she would have been a little girl, but now she was all grown up. Maybe right. he doesn't even know that uh, Konstantinovich is looking for her. Well, what he didn't recognize her from what's a catalog of people in the madhouse. He wasn't just wandering around the madhouse saying, oh, you don't look familiar, you do. He went there because he knew to look. Maybe, maybe he is doing his own investigation. 
No. She just got there first. And we and we have to admit we don't. The prince said uh, once, twice, or, or another time that uh, the money was being provided by his patron, right? Yeah. He's not. There's, a, there's definitely a mystery here that we need to solve. Um, I would like I'd like to go to to a library or something to look up this this Baron and get more information on him since none of us seem to know who he is. All right, uh, so going to the library will be a good place to pick up next yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow, it's getting uh, really intense. <laughs> Our players included John Dos Passos. David Gasway, Troy Wheeldryer, Julian Arba, and myself with Julian, with Chet, with Jesus, with uh, <laughs> Keith Start Craig. over? Give it again? <laughs> no, I'll just go on. With Keith Craig as the keeper of the secrets. We're currently producing up to four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production. In order to create a richer listener experience, we provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The cost involved with our shows are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Riley, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, viel Glück und viel Spaß. Hab ich sie wieder zugedeckt, da hilft nur aufzustehen und mal was anderes sehen, weil man sonst blind werden kann, so fing es an. Drum, wenn du Mitleid kennst, mit dem armen Nachgespenst, dann schließ nicht ab die Tür, nein, öffne sie mir.